one minute I was safe in the cosy confines of TV's Games Master, the next I was face to face with the boy from Manchester's Mean Streets, European Computer Games Champion, Danny Curley. Before it self-destructed, in the manner that tape messages often do in these situations, it set to head for the darkest corner of London's Docklands. The mission? To shoot a film which could change the face of a whole generation. To mastermind Power Play. Power Play will demonstrate a whole range of video games playing skills. Now note I use the word skills, not cheats. Cheats are sad, they're tragic. In fact, if you need to use cheats, you're probably the type of person whose lips move when they read. You will find no cheats on this video. What you will find is real, genuine skill which will teach you. To do this, Danny Curley will pass on the benefits of his years of legendary games playing prowess. We'll sit together in a cosy, chummy conversation type situation and we'll start with the basics. Proper joystick technique. Real button bashing. Screen positioning. And weapons technique. We'll take those basic skills and apply them to every single type of game you could possibly imagine. Platform games, beat em up, sports, no stone will be left unturned. We reckon by the end of the video you have an exceptional chance of being pretty above average. So much so that we'll test your newfound skill with a special Danny Curley Games Challenge at the end of the video. So if I was you, I wouldn't let my attention wander for a sec. Right, Danny, we're going to start off with sports games. Now, what we've done is, together we've chosen what we think are probably the best sports games of all time, but also ones which show a wide range of skills that you can basically use in any sports game. We're going to start off with uh, Speedball 2. Now, this has got a management section, Danny. How, how do you cope with that? In the management section, you can actually go into the gym where you can beef up the attributes of all your separate players individually. I've actually noticed that I seem to use my goal and my centre forward more than any other players on the pitch. Right. I also noticed that a lot of other people seem to use them too most. That's mainly because all the goal scoring is done between them two certain players. Right. So it's very important to beef them up to their maximum potential. Do you think that's a, that's a general rule if you've got a, any type of sports game where you get the chance to build up players in a team? Is it, is it better to go for the individual you use the most rather than spread it out? Yeah, it's important to be able to identify which certain players you use the most. It's like in, say, American football games, if you use your left receiver the most, if you can actually beef him up, beef him up. Or if there's a transfer market in the game, buy uh, the best player you can get. There's no point in wasting money on players you hardly ever use. What if, um, if you have a little bit more left over, who would you, who would you put it on? Mm, centre midfield. Right. He seems to do quite a bit of passing and receiving, so I'd go for him. So you're keeping that channel up the middle of the pitch. I think it's right, a Wimbledon yeah. type yeah. of game. That's right, yeah. OK, Danny, so I'm in the blue going up the pitch, you're in the red going down. So what I want to see from you, Danny, is some good goals. Go on, hit me with your best right, shot. Right, a good one. You get stand about there. Yeah. And throw it very high. So it's right in the middle. Then go in, smash the goalie, and knock it in the back of the net like that. OK, as we see from the replay there, Danny throws it in high, so my goalie's committed to jumping on the way back down. He bashes him and right in the back of the net. Well, it's funny, Danny, because I use a slightly different version of that. It's, um, not quite so subtle, I just basically tank it up the middle, right up to the goalie and just keep batting him. But the problem is, because you've powered up your goalkeeper so much, it doesn't quite work against him because he's rock hard. But nine times out of ten, that will work as well. OK, Danny, we've covered the goals. Now, is there any other tips, any other general tips on, uh, on Speedball 2? These, these coins at the side, yeah. always go up your way to get hold of them. It'd be very important, because with the money, you can beef up your players better. So if you've got a stronger team, that gives you a big advantage over your opposition. Right, and you can power up those essential players, like the goalie, like exactly, the forward yeah. again. And yeah. there's also these, these corkscrew things at the side of the pitch called score multipliers. Uh -huh. At the present, you get 10 points for a goal. If you throw it round once, 
you can see a little orange light there. It indicates that I'll now get 15 points for a goal. Right. It multiplies it by 50%. If I throw it around again, I'll now get 20 points for a goal. So it's worth going out of your way to try and get yeah, that? Yeah, I'd actually advise you that should be your first priority at the start of a game. Yeah. Also, if you, if you make does that, the very first thing you should do is counteract that. If, if you throw it back round, then it'll knock it off so his scores won't be multiplied. But the fact is, this is all irrelevant anyway, Danny, because there's no way you're getting near my goal again. We'll have to see about that, Dominic. OK, Danny, we move on from Speedball 2 to another game in which you can set about your opponents in a non-sporting manner, NHLPA Hockey. 